Welcome back. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023. In this video, I'd like to show you how to configure hardware transcoding and hardware conferencing by utilizing digital signal processors in a Cisco router. Please note that this video assumes that you have an understanding of DSPs. It's important that you view the introductory videos digital voice and digital circuits. In those introductory videos I explain concepts such as codec complexity, the DSP calculator which is used for sizing DSPs and other introductory information regarding DSPs. In this video we're going to look at the actual configuration of DSPs rather than going over all the basics again. Before we get started let's have a brief overview of DSPs. DSPs code and decode, hence the name decoder, analog information into a digital format. So they are coders, decoders. DSPs can be used for analog voice, fax and modem signaling, as well as DTMF tones. They can also translate between different codecs by doing what's called transcoding. Transcoding essentially taking one codec, like G729, and converting it or translating it into another codec such as G711 in very much the same way as English and French can be translated or transcoded. DSPs convert IP packet sampling rates such as converting three voice samples per IP packet to two voice samples per IP packet. DSPs can also provide audio mixing services to terminate a conference call with multiple parties in other words setting up conferencing. Once again, please refer to the introductory videos where I demonstrate the use of the DSP calculator to calculate required number of DSPs for a given scenario. So there are four functions or uses of DSPs in a Cisco IP telephony environment. The first one is voice termination. DSPs do a conversion between circuit-based voice and voice over IP. In other words, we are converting from a traditional PSTN connections such as FXO, T1 or E1 PRI and voice over IP. It provides for echo cancellation, voice activity detection and jitter management. DSPs can also be used for media termination points or MTPs which allow for the passing of one VoIP stream to another when using the same codec or transformation between ALAW and MULAW or different packetization periods. The two that we're going to concentrate on in this section is firstly transcoding where we do a conversion from one codec to another and conferencing where we mix multiple voice streams. I'm firstly going to show you how to set up transcoding and then I'll show you how to set up a hardware conference. So transcoding is used for codec to codec translations. So for example G711 ULAW to G729A. Any DSP chipset can be used to provide transcoding resources. Please refer to the DSP calculator once again to specify and size DSPs for specific hardware. If hardware conferencing is active on the router, then transcoding resources must be configured on the same voice card as the conference DSP resources. Again, please refer to the DSP calculator, which will make your life a lot easier when sizing DSPs. Now a sample topology builds on a topology that we created in previous videos when we set up a SIP client, in this example the X-like client, to communicate with a branch router. What I want to show you in this example is that the X-like client is configured to use G711 ULAW as well as Cisco Unity Express within the branch router. We want to set up the WAN to use G729 to save on bandwidth, but we still want to allow the HQ phone to communicate with the X-like client. So in other words, we're going to do transcoding on the branch router between G729 and G711, as well as allowing the HQ phone to leave a voicemail on Cisco Unity Express, which only supports G711 ULAW. So we are once again doing a conversion between G729 on the WAN and G711 between the router 
and Cisco Unity Express. Before configuring transcoding, let me show you the issues that we'll encounter when transcoding is not used. So let's see if 2000 can call 3000 as well as the XLite client and let's see what happens when 3000 doesn't answer the call and the call goes to voicemail on the Cisco Unity Express configured on the branch router. So on the HQ router I'm going to try and call the XLite client at 3012. You can see the call arrives. I can answer the call. So on this side it says call established, but notice on the HQ phone it's still ringing. So I'll end the call. Let's try and make a call in the reverse direction. So in other words, let's dial 2000 from the X-Lite client. You can see the phone rings briefly and then the call dies, but on this side it still says calling. So I'll try that again, dial 2000. So it sort of rings and then dies. Try and ring in the reverse direction. We have an incoming call and notice what happens when I answer the call. The x -like client is showing the call is established but the phone at HQ is still ringing. Can we call the branch Cisco IP phone from the HQ IP phone? And that seems to ring properly. Let's see what happens when the call goes to voicemail. Notice the call immediately dies. We can't leave a voicemail. So things are not working properly. We cannot call from HQ to the XLite client. The XLite client has been configured to use G711 ULaw, but if we look at the dial peers on the routers, it's on the HQ router, type show run, pipe begin, peer voice. You can see dial peer voice one VoIP has been configured with a destination pattern of three triple dot. In other words, we are allowing the HQ router to call numbers in this range and we are pointing it to the IP address 10.16.102 with the session target command. On the branch router we've got something similar. Notice we've got a VoIP dial pair of 1 configured with a destination pattern of 2 triple dot and pointing to the IP address of the HQ router. Now it's important to remember the default codec on a VoIP dial pair is G729 not G711. So we have an issue because this phone is going to want to use G729 when communicating via the HQ router to the branch router and therefore to the XLite client but the XLite client has been configured to use G711 and so has Cisco Unity Express. So I could do this command show run and notice we have the option all which shows us the configuration with defaults. And if we look at dial peer 1 Notice dial dash peer voice one VoIP. There's our destination pattern. All the other defaults are shown here, including the codec that's used. So the default codec is G729R8 on a VoIP dial peer. So the all command shows us what the default values are. You can see the codec is G729R8. You can see that VAD is enabled and the signaling protocol used 
in this example is set to Cisco. As discussed, default codec is G729. Let's configure transcoding to allow G729 to be converted to G711. So there are two parts to the configuration. The first part is to configure the DSP farm and the second part is to configure CUCME to allow the DSP farm to register. So firstly in global config mode you go into the voice card. The easiest way to find the voice card number is on the router just to type show run pipe include voice card and as you can see here the voice card number is zero. So on the voice card you type codec complexity and you specify the complexity of the codec. In this example I want to use flex to allow it to dynamically choose either high complexity, medium complexity or low complexity. We're going to set up this voice card as a DSP farm. Now DSP farm is essentially a grouping of DSPs. A DSP farm can be configured for various functions. In this example we're going to configure it for transcoding. Because it's a transcoder we can configure the DSP farm transcoder to convert or transcode between different codecs. So here's an example of some of the codecs that we want to enable transcoding for. You don't have to type the codecs. Various codecs are automatically enabled by default but you may want to remove some of the codecs because of their complexity. What's the maximum number?